In this tutorial series, we're going to talk about the appearance panel in Illustrator and the importance of the appearance panel, along with the layers panel. I think uh, the appearance panel are, are probably the two most important panels to know and understand in uh, Illustrator. Um, a lot of people don't feel that uh, the appearance panel offers that much, unfortunately, uh, and in past versions it didn't, but uh, it has really received an upgrade in the last couple of versions of, C uh, of Adobe Creative Suite uh, to the point where now um, it is probably the premier panel in Illustrator, and to understand it and how it works is to really become a power user. Um, and uh, what we're seeing on the screen here is an illustration that really makes use of the appearance panel and uh, and what it can do in Illustrator. Uh, I'm going to open up the layers panel here and I'm just going to unlock my bird fill uh, layer here and I'm just going to click right there. And You can see that this bird fill, this color, uh, this um, the layer that I call bird fill is just a simply one object. Um, although it has multiple patterns uh, and colors uh, and effects all within this one work path. Uh, and I can show that it's just one work path. If I drag the uh, one of these um, uh, anchors off, you can see here that in fact, once the illustrator catches up with me, that in fact this is just one work path um, that has all those objects and uh, patterns and effects uh, applied to it just going to undo that. Um, so let's open up the appearance panel and just quickly see what attributes are applied to this path in order to give it that complex appearance. We can see here that um, currently it has one, two, three fills plus a stroke. The stroke is set behind the fills however um, and we have uh, an opacity uh, setting here. If I click on that opacity setting you can see that in fact this uh, object is set to normal blend mode and the opacity is set to 100%. Uh, there's also a mask that has been um, uh, associated with this shape, but I've turned that off for this demo. Now, well, that's all fine and good, but there's more. Um, let's take a look at this stroke, for example. Right now, that stroke is represented by this white glow that is going all the way around the object. And you might say, well, that doesn't look like a stroke. Well, in fact, if I twirl on this disclosure triangle right here for the for the stroke on the stroke layer, you can see that there is a number of effects applied to just that stroke alone, um, including the Gaussian blur. Uh, the Gaussian blur is, if I turn that off, you can see uh, that, in fact, this stroke is a 20-point white stroke. Uh, but I've applied a Gaussian blur just to that stroke alone. Um, and we'll talk about how we can apply effects to single uh, layers and strokes in just a, mem a moment. Um, if I twirl that up, I'm just going to twirl down this uh, fill uh, layer here. And this is just our basic orange color that is in the background of this uh, this shape. Um, and it has a very um, uh, a simple opacity. It's, I think it's default opacity. But you can see that there's another effect applied to that fill. just And that's our inner glow. Um, and that's that orange uh, look, if I turn that off for a second, you can sort of see what effect that that um, inner glow has on that shape. Turn that back on, and we'll quickly go up to the next fill. The next fill is a pattern fill, and uh, this pattern fill has been applied through the swatches panel, and we'll talk about how to apply uh, pattern fills in just a moment, but I want you to see that, in fact, this also has a separate opacity setting. If I uh, click on this, you can see it's set to color burn blending mode with 43% opacity. And finally, this color uh, fill up here is uh, another pattern fill with a 25% opacity and set to color dodge in its blending mode. So all those different um, effects, fills, patterns, strokes, have all been applied to just this one object right here in the appearance panel. And how do we go about doing that? Well, let's open up a new file. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a rounded rectangle. I'm just going to choose the rounded rectangle tool and draw out a shape on my artboard. And I open up my appearance panel and I can see that I currently have uh, no, stro uh, no stroke and no fill assigned. Uh, I'm just going to target my fill layer here and I'm going to click on the disclosure uh, triangle and that brings up my swatches panel and I'm just going to choose this uh, yellowy orange color as my first fill color. The next thing I want to do though is I would like to create another fill layer. So I'm going to go down to my add new fill button at the bottom of my appearance panel. And by default it's reproduced the fill layer that I currently have, uh, so, uh, I have the one fill layer I had selected. But of course I want to turn this uh, layer into a pattern fill. Uh, so what I need to do is I'm going to go 
and uh, select my file drop down menu and select place and I'm going to navigate to the folder where I currently have my uh, paper pattern dot PSD file and there it is right there paper pattern dot PSD select place I'll say OK and there is my my pattern I'm just going to pull that off to the side and and that's fine but how am I going to turn this into a pattern that I can then fill um, in my uh, this layer here well I need to do something I'm going to select that file and um, by default uh, what happens is um, whenever you place a rasterized image in Illustrator it just links that file to uh, wherever that file exists on your hard drive um, but what what uh, we need to do is we need to embed this um, uh, Illustrator file. Now I've already done, or sorry, this Photoshop file. I've already done this, and so that's why this embed uh, button is grayed out. Um, but what uh, it's important for you to do is, is make sure that this uh, pattern is uh, embedded, um, because it won't work. We can't uh, turn it into a pattern unless it is uh, embedded. Um, but once you have that uh, file embedded or that pattern embedded, we're going to go to the Edit drop-down menu, and I'm going to select Define Pattern. And I'll just type in something like that. And you can see it's updated my swatches panel uh, to include that new feather pattern. In fact, I don't need this anymore. I can delete that. Currently, I have my swatches uh, panel set to show only um, patterns. Uh, if I click on this button here, you can see that I can choose um, I can choose to show all swatches, but I've, right now I've got it to just show pattern swatches, which is fine. That makes it a little bit easier for us to, to see it. Now I'm going to uh, select that shape again, and again I'm going to go to my appearance panel. This time I'm going to target my top fill, and when I click on that disclosure triangle, again my swatches panel shows up, and there is that new pattern that we had just placed and defined as a pattern. I'm just going to select that. And there it is. I, that looks fine, except we can't see the color underneath it. Um, this is where I'm going to open up. I'm going to, again, target that fill layer. And I click on the opacity setting for that layer. And I'm going to select color burn for my blending mode. And you can see what that does. Color burn is a, is a nice way of uh, colorizing artwork. Uh, it, it works with the underlying color, um, but it, uh, it uses a burn setting so that black turns into this warm red, or this deep red. But I'm going to reduce the opacity just a little bit. We don't need it to be that high. And there, that's what I'm going to do. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to add a um, uh, an inner glow to this object, but I don't want it to sit on top of everything. I don't want it to be applied universally to this object. I would like it to be targeted to just this layer here. So what I can do is, again, I can target that orange layer, and now I'm going to go to the um, FX button, and that's the Add New Effects button at the bottom of my Appearance panel, and I'm just going to click that, and you can see that in fact I have the entire Effects drop-down menu right here within my Appearance panel, which is very handy, and uh, I'm going to go to Stylize, Inner Glow, that'll bring up my Inner Glow dialog box, and I'm going to choose, um, by default this blending mode is usually set to Screen, um, because I've been playing around with this, it's, it's set to multiply right now, and I want that to be multiply, and I'm going to change the color to um, a deep red. So I'm going to choose red in my hue slider, and something saturated and fairly dark in value. And I'm going to select preview so we can see what that looks like. Right now we have a very modest um, inner glow applied to the uh, to the inner uh, uh, circle of the, the orange color down below. I'm going to increase the size of that just a little bit though. I'm going to bring that up to about 25. You can see that a little bit better. And I'm going to say OK. Now you can see that the inner glow um, has been applied to just this layer. Um, if you would like to see what it would look like if I had applied the inner glow to the entire shape uh, globally, well, I can do that. I can actually highlight that inner glow effect, and I'm going to drag down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it out of any particular um, uh, layer uh, target, and I'm just going to apply it to that entire shape. 
Now you can see it's it's got a little bit of a different look now, doesn't it? Um, it's actually sitting on top of both the pattern and the um, the orange color underneath. Well, I mean that looks okay. Um, that might be the effect that I'm looking for. But look, as a, if I click and drag again and drag that onto that fill, you can see how that highlighted uh, that highlights that um, target layer a little bit differently. And now it, it's being applied to that color uh, that color layer in a different way, and the um, fill layer, the pattern layer above, is not being affected in the same way. Let's do something else. Let's take this inner glow effect and apply it to this pattern layer right up above. And that has a completely different look. It's actually almost imperceptible what's happening there, um, but it is slightly darkened around the edges of that pattern. I'm going to bring it back down to the uh, fill layer, that orange fill layer, because that's essentially what I would like to have. And we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Now there's a couple other things I want to, to show, um, and that is right now we currently don't have a stroke uh, applied to this, but I am going to apply a, a stroke to this. I'm going to, first of all, um, select, uh, well we'll select black for now, and I'm going to make this a fairly heavy weight, a 10 point stroke. Actually let's make that even heavier, let's make that a 20 point stroke. What I want to do is to show you that by default the stroke is being applied um, to the center of the uh, vector shape, meaning that 10 points of that 20 point line is on one side and 10 points is on the other side. Um, but you can see how that impinges on our fill to some degree. Uh, and I don't want that, and for various reasons, we probably, you know, if this were being a graphic that, that's going to be created for uh, a website, for example, we need specific uh, pixel values. Um, perhaps we would like to have this stroke appear behind the fill. Well, I can target that stroke layer in the appearance panel and just click and drag and drag it so that it appears underneath our bottom fill color. And you can see now that that stroke is still, in fact, now behind our fill, uh, fill layers. Make sure that's highlighted again. I'm going to add one more stroke to this. I'm going to um, make sure that stroke is highlighted. I'm going to click down here on the Add New Stroke button. And again, by default, it's created a stroke that is uh, 20 points, um, or it's basically duplicated the stroke that we currently have. Uh, but I don't want that. I'm going to uh, choose the bottom stroke. And I'm going to uh, change the color to something like red, and I'm going to increase again the weight to 40. And because this stroke is sitting behind the um, the top stroke, uh, we see it sort of peeking out from behind that black stroke, which is just fine. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to make sure that that red stroke is targeted, and again I'm going to go to my effects drop-down menu or my effects button in the appearance panel. And I'm going to go all the way down to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And that'll open up my Gaussian Blur dialog box. And I'm going to uh, ramp this up to about 30, uh, just so we can really see this effect. And there we go. I have that Gaussian Blur applied to just that stroke. Um, now, we've gone through a lot of work here just to create this appearance. and Say, for example, in, in uh, a couple weeks' time, I would like to use this uh, a very same uh, appearance again. Does that mean I have to go through all the process of recreating it and importing the pattern all over again? Well, no, we don't have to do that. As a matter of fact, um, this uh, uh, one of the reasons we've gone through all this trouble of, of, of setting up all these strokes and effects on this one single uh, object is because it now allows us to save all of this appearance as a graphic style. And if I go over to my Graphic Styles panel, if you don't currently have it open, you can go to the Window drop-down menu and select Graphic Styles. But I'm going to open up my Graphic Styles uh, panel, and I'm going to, with this object still selected, I'm going to click on the Option button in the panel and select New Graphic Style. And I'll call that Feather. And it might take a little moment, but you can see now that Graphic Style has been applied to our Graphic Styles uh, uh, panel. Well, great, you say, but if I open up a new file, that graphic style is now gone. How can I access that graphic style uh, in another uh, file? Well, let's go back to this uh, uh, Illustrator file, and I'm going to, again, with my graphic styles 
panel open I'm going to open up my options button and I'm going to save graphic style library again I'm going to call this feather Oops. and automatically the illustrator knows to put this uh, new file into the graphic styles dialog or, uh, folder in your in your illustrator dialog um, uh, folder and I'm going to go back to this new file again open up my graphic styles uh, panel and this time I'm going to open graphic style library user defined feather and it opens up a new panel all I need to do is click that panel uh, that little graphic style once and it now gets put into my graphic styles panel over here I can draw out any new shape and it will have this graphic style applied to it